his life now. All right. <laughs> We're back at it. Friday morning. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for your patience. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> Little technical difficulties. <laughs> so we appreciate that you're waiting. That's right. Thank We're you. Up and running, and we are looking good. We're ready to rock and roll. Are we on there? I'm looking. Okay. I think I have to refresh the page here. <laughs> All Un right. momento, por favor. So today we are going. Ah, there we are. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going live. Good morning, Amber. Hey, Amber. Thanks for your patience while we were getting everything together. Mm-hmm. Dorothy actually slept in. That is untrue. <laughs> I did not sleep in. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She did. <laughs> Should I put that up on Instagram? I'm going to do it. Oh, good morning, Chantel. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. Those of our viewers here, I was going to say listeners from Exploring Mind and Body, but Amber and Chantel are both doing amazing in our 20s. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. I am talking here. <laughs> I'll take over. So Drew was saying, Amber and Chantel are both doing amazing in our 21-day challenge. They're in there every day posting pictures involved. And we've got a pretty big contest going on right now in our 21-day uh, challenge. And stakes are pretty high. It's our biggest, um, how do you call it, prize ever. So everyone is in the running for a can I say it? Tell them. Okay. Everyone is in the running for a free night stay in the mountains. That's right. So stakes are high, <laughs> challenges on, and we couldn't be more proud of everybody in our in our group and the work and effort that they've been putting in. So kudos. <laughs> kudos. Isn't that a good word? What kind of word is that? It's like good for you. <laughs> I know what it means. <laughs> it's like an announcer type of word. Oh, I don't think so. It's a Dorothy word. Kudos to so-and-so for using that word. <laughs> okay. Chantel, she said, said she's excited. Yes. yes. So mm -hmm. we're so excited. Your posts, you guys' posts are amazing. My gosh. <laughs> and uh, we should do this. We'd like to do it full time. All the time. Keep the group running. <laughs> I think it's really the 21 days that people get excited about. Yeah. The short... Um, how can you say? Well, it seems so, 21 days doesn't seem like a long time. It's doable. It's, you know, manageable. We've done longer challenges in the past, and it just seems that, like, um, because we get excited at the short challenges, we're like, let's keep it going and do a longer one. And it just doesn't seem as effective, I suppose, right, when we do the longer ones. Yeah. We do yeah. challenges often in our monthly membership group. Oh, yeah. We're actually doing a fitness challenge right now. Yes, we're doing in our monthly membership, we're doing a step challenge, but we've also combined it with the plank challenge. We've never done two challenges at the same time before, so that's pretty awesome. And uh, so we it's, it's so great to see in our monthly membership as well, everybody is stepping away. So people get very competitive with their steps. <laughs> it's surprising. I, I grew up in a very competitive world as an athlete, so I know what it like, it's like to compete, but I, I think that... Even people that weren't athletes or didn't don't have, a, I think everyone has like a competitive edge. And if you put them in a step challenge or if you put them in a competitive situation, people actually thrive. And it yeah. always surprises me that that in that inner that inner drive that people have when they're in a competition. It's very mm -hmm. cool to see. Yeah, and our plank challenge is uh, just a series of. Uh, different plank exercises each day they they have a seven day challenge so each day they get a video from us of a different um, set of plank challenges so posts are going up all over our monthly membership about that as well and it's so awesome to see the pictures going up and um, it, it's so so interesting people are using their their self timers <laughs> and actually timing or, or taking pictures of themselves in, in their planks because one of the components of the challenge is to take pictures. So that's kind of cool to see as well. Very cool to see. We just had Jolyn jump in here on Facebook. Good morning, Jolyn. I've seen your comments on our page, on our yes. True Form page. Thank you so much. Uh, a newer follower. And uh, we so much appreciate everyone that comes in. We actually had Mandy just pop in here. Hey, Mandy. Good morning, Mandy. Mandy's also rocking the 21-day CTP challenge. Mm -hmm. And she's got her fitness posts going up and food pics. So awesome to see. We have Ginny over here on Instagram as well in, involved in our over the place, uh, monthly we? membership. So <laughs> those of you on Facebook or on Instagram as well, that's Instagram. Uh, just Drew Taddy, we use that as a business page. And then if you're on Instagram or on Facebook, 
and that's facebook.com slash trueformlife. So we're back here and we are talking about improving sleep habits today. Mm -hmm. So it's we're excited. so important. We're actually talking about doing a earlier show in the evening because some people don't always get a chance to tune in in the morning on a Friday and we love these shows so much. So we always look forward to our Friday morning live show. So we're thinking about doing a later show earlier in the week. So stay tuned for those announcements coming up. Did you understand what he said? First what? you said, first you said we're thinking about doing an earlier show. and then Earlier you, in the week. <laughs> Come on. And then he says something completely else. I'm like, I am not following. Stay with me. So earlier in the week, we'll do an evening show. Do I have to use my translator? Sometimes I have issues explaining things. <laughs> and sometimes I go a little bit too much in the explanation stage. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, okay, get on with it. <laughs> but I think it comes from teaching grade one for so many years. It's like step by step over and over and over and over and over again until you get sick of your own voice. <laughs> but Drew's like the opposite where he doesn't give enough details. And I'm like, eh? <laughs> what's that? Earlier in the week, like <gasps> Monday, Tuesday. Uh, examples Monday. are good. Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> we'll probably be doing an evening live show very soon. Thumbs up if you understood that better. <laughs> Why don't you leave some comments below and, at, and let us know if you think that's a good idea. If you'd like us to do a, a regular show in the evening. And you can even let us know who you understand better. Me <laughs> or Drew. <laughs> Dorothy's always like, she always says to me, everything's not a competition. <laughs> and then in situations like this, she's always like, My who do you, who do you <laughs> she choose me or you? What's up, Waylon? Waylon just jumped in on hey, Instagram. Um, okay, so we're talking about sleep today and how to improve sleep habits habits, or how to get a restful night's sleep. That's right. And uh, we it was exciting because we um, got a few questions come in last night, actually. So a few people had, we had posted, a, how do you say, like a, that picture we posted last question. night. Question. Okay, a question. <laughs> See, he helps me find my words. <laughs> we asked a question yesterday. On uh, the True Form page about what's the most difficult part when it comes to sleep. And we had a couple of people answer. So we'll be addressing those questions this morning as well. Super exciting to have uh, people answer questions. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of times when we were first starting out, we'd answer a question and look for engagement. Nothing. Ask a question. <laughs> but yeah. now it's nice that we have some more engagement. So thank you guys for being here. <laughs> I think it's easy to go back when we first started. And it's like, you put, and everyone knows I do some business coaching as well. And I'm like, teach how to use social media. And then a lot of people are like, well, I ask a question and put a post up and no one says anything. I'm like, yeah, we've been there. <laughs> we know exactly what that's like. So I think Dorothy's just trying to explain our appreciation mm -hmm. for you guys coming in to check us out, whether it's live or whether it's a post and you answer. It really means a lot to us. Yeah. So let's get to it. That's us a great idea for an earlier uh, in the week show yeah. in the evening. Thank Thanks, you, Chantel. Chantel, for your feedback. How would you like to tackle our topic today? Well, let's get started with talking about how to get a restful night's sleep. And I suppose we're both going to say, start with a routine. That is number one. So why don't you tackle oh, that? You just put me on the chopping block. Okay. And go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> the routines are, is the basis of everything that you and I teach. So whether it's a workout routine or a, you know, a meal plan, having a routine for nutrition, it's no different with sleep. And all of these components fit together so uh if you're not sleeping well then it's chances are then um things will be lacking with nutrition and then you'll be too tired to work out and then you won't be sleeping again and it's like this vicious vicious cycle so evening routines are so important and we usually most often have routines for our children <laughs> Um, and then we forget about ourselves, you know, and children thrive on routines, bedtime routines, and it's no different than us. We as adults need a bedtime. We do. So you need to choose a bedtime where you're going to have enough sleep um, for, for the day. So if you know that you're getting up at six, you want to get to bed so that you have at least, I like, I would say eight hours. <laughs> That's a lot for some people. Some people are more six to seven hours, but you'll, you will know 
what is what is your um, sleep preference number of hours? But we would say probably at least seven, right? Yeah. Let me jump in here and say that sometimes people say, well, like I only need four or five hours of sleep. And mm. I don't think, like I think. Don't that, believe you. <laughs> I think that, I think when someone says that, they don't know what it feels like to get a good seven or eight hours mm -hmm. of sleep. I think if you're so used to in and out of sleep or sleeping four or six or five or six hours or, or up up and down throughout the night and you're used to that, that's your normal. I think you don't, I think those people don't know what it's like to have a good restful night sleep all night long. Mm -hmm. And it, it changes your entire day. And I think we know like new moms would know, for example, or those that struggle with having a sleep, like you sleep well and then abruptly things change and you're like, I, I can't sleep. And then we've, we, I think we all go through, like I've gone through like insomnia states mm -hmm. where I wasn't able to sleep. And I think we all, we've all gone through that. And our day is so different. Our day is entirely different from a good night's sleep to feeling like a zombie because you didn't sleep at all. Mm -hmm. So first decide how, what is your ideal uh, amount of hours of sleep. So f for me, it would be eight. <laughs> but if it's seven, six, whatever it is, and then set yourself a bedtime. Some people might even have to set a reminder on their phone to go to bed <laughs> or set a reminder somehow. But you need to be consistent in the time that you go to sleep. So if that's 10 o'clock, then every night um, at 10 o'clock, that should be your sleep time. Now leading up to your bedtime, so the hour before your bedtime or even a couple hours before your bedtime is the most crucial part of your sleep habits because that's where your routine comes into play. So if you're going to bed at, at 10, for example, you want to start your routine at least at nine. So, um, turn like their, um, electronics, like phones, TVs, all of that should be turned off at least an hour before you go to bed. Okay. Can I, can we slow down just a bit? So you just, I just want to read that Mandy said routine is huge in our horse. <laughs> That's house. I know. I'm it's just house like... and horse together. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because Mandy uh, lives has a, a farm. They're farming, really? farming family. Yeah. Do they have a horse? I don't know. Mandy, do you have a horse? <laughs> no, they have cows. <laughs> Thanks, Mandy. Let us know if it's your routine for you, for your kids, or for just everyone in general. And um, oh, I just wanted to mention that like, I just felt like I wanted to say say a few things before you went through the whole every every tip that we have. Okay. <laughs> so. Oops, house. Yeah. <laughs> I know, Mandy. Our viewers, we know Mandy, so I think it's okay to poke fun just a little bit. <laughs> Feel free to poke fun back, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just want I wanted to say that first of all, you have to realize that there's different times for everyone. So if you like the hours that we talk about, for example, like I don't feel great after seven hours of sleep. I think right around seven is good for me. And Dorothy was saying eight is better for her. And I, so for me, I feel like if I get eight or more, I'm too tired. Like I'm tired throughout the day. And that's just guessing and testing. So if you don't give yourself a chance to try, so if you're always a four hour person, then you don't know what it's like to sleep for eight hours. And if you're always uh, an, an eight hour, eight or nine hour person, like we know people that sleep nine, 10 hours, which is perfectly okay if that works for you, but give it, give seven hours a try or eight hours. Maybe you're more productive throughout the day, or maybe you have more energy. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. No, so, and he said no horse, just, just cows. cows. <laughs> <laughs> Amber says nine is nine is good for me. Yeah, and it, like Drew was saying, everyone's different. Um, so you have to kind of guess and test. There'll be a trial period to guess and test um, where you feel your best with how many hours. But you have to know your number. Yeah, yeah, because that, that's going to be your optimal your optimal sleep, and that's going to make you perform the best throughout the day. So I think it's very important to know to know how how many hours of sleep that you need. Because if you get six hours and you need nine, let's say like Amber, then maybe you mix in a nap and we can talk about napping. I'm, oh. um, I'm a big nap, big believer in naps. And I think that there's, is a proper way to nap actually. <laughs> so maybe you need a nap if you know you didn't get seven hours. Like mm -hmm. for us, sometimes we have training sessions till 10 at night. So we work, get up early and start working and maybe a nap needs to be involved in there because we're going to be up till 10 o'clock mm -hmm. or 11 because of training sessions. Mm -hmm. I want to touch on electronics. 
Yeah, I was just getting into it. Maybe I was going full tilt ahead in there a little bit too quickly. <laughs> too intensely. You're sprinting. Couldn't just, wait to. I just get so excited and then I just start talking and talking and talking. Well, we got some and Instagram. Drew, and then Drew interrupts me. I got, oh, we have Cindy in here. Lucinda jumped in here. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in on Instagram or also on Facebook. So you guys can check us out on either platform, whichever is your favorite. Mm -hmm. Electronics in the bedroom, Dorothy. Oh, dear. <laughs> Chantel said I like nine hours of sleep, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think eight, eight or nine hours, really, like seven to nine hours, I think, is a, is a good window. If you're past nine hours, I think, personally, I think it's a bit much. And if you're under six hours, I don't think that's enough. And then that's mm -hmm. my personal opinion. You might need to try what's best for you. And I think that's what we recommend. Mm -hmm. So, Drew, you are super excited to talk about electronics. <laughs> so I was just mentioning before Drew cut me off. <laughs> I was just mentioning that. You have to. That, you have to cut her off sometimes. That Won't you, stop. Stop it. <laughs> Let me talk now. Okay. Go. <laughs> so I was just saying that. Before your bedtime, so let's say your bedtime is 10 to get your optimal amount of hours of sleep, then you need a period or a window of time before your bedtime where there is no screen time whatsoever. So whether that's, uh, it should be at least an hour where there's no, in my opinion, uh, where there's no screen time whatsoever. You want to elaborate on that? I can feel it. No. I'm no, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Drew. I think, well, I Just would. Just cut me off again. <laughs> I would have started off by saying no electronics in the bedroom. Mm. And I think that, you know, it's kind of funny. People, like, we always have this noise going on. Like, the radio is always going. The TV's always on in the house. It's not only on, on in the house. It's on in every room. So yeah. And, like, it doesn't give yourself a chance to wind down and rest and relax. So if you always have the TV on in the bedroom and then you try to go to sleep right away, it doesn't work. <laughs> because like it's that constant buzzing, it's that constant noise. So then when there's silence, it's like your brain is like, ah! doesn't know what to do. <laughs> what am I do like? What am I doing? And how can you shut that down? Like how can you run? Um, how can you turn your mind off? And someone said, I have a question here. Chantel asked that yeah. last last night. She answered our question. Says, how do you shut your brain off to go to sleep? And I think that that hour of a, no electronics is going to answer that question. And, and maybe we're not quite sure, Shanta, we don't know what your bedroom looks like, but there may be an electronics in the bedroom that are on constantly that make it an issue as well. Maybe not just for you, Shanta, but for other people. And, and we, you see that often. You go to a friend's house or family's house and there's TVs in the bedroom. And if they're always on, they're all, they're, they're causing issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're ca and it's, not, it's energetically issues as well. It's, it's the positive ions that those are releasing into the atmosphere and it's a whole vicious circle like Dorothy was saying of um less than I don't know like I feel like your home should be a zen place mm -hmm. like I feel like you go from like in I was in college and and I've been in I've had party houses <laughs> and I know what it's like to have like a crazy party house and then I know what it's like to have a, a like a beautiful zen house where there's soft music and then maybe there's incense and maybe there's living plants essential oils and uh, diffusers and essential oils <laughs> and, and it's two very different lives and lifestyles and there's and and i, I think one you sleep very well in mm -hmm. and another you don't so those are two extremes that i'm explaining it yes so and then and um another way to i uh, just touching on electronics there and how they emit the positive I, um, how do I say it again? Ions. Ions. So then you need something in your home to counteract that. And salt, salt lamps are, uh, Himalayan salt lamps are an excellent way because they will release the negative ions to balance the positive ones. So it will really create a balance in your energy in the home, which will promote sleep right. <laughs> when it's time. And especially with all the electronics that we have. So mm -hmm. we have... A phone, like I, we have phones, we have laptops, we have regular computers, we have iPads. It's endless video, like video game things. And I'm sure it's not uncommon for for some people to have all of those in the bedrooms: laptop, phone, iPad, TV. Like I'm sure that there's some of us that have all of those in the bedroom. So, which is preventing us from getting sleep. Yeah, I did that one time. Dorothy was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> And I had, I was watching like a movie oh, yeah. on the laptop and then I was watching a football game with the music off on the computer. And I was like, I just want to lay here and do nothing. I was a bit 
mentally exhausted. But uh, I, so. I walked in the room and he had something going on the laptop and then something else on the iPad and the phone and I was like, what happened to you? <laughs> Pull yourself together. I had a little meltdown. <laughs> I was like, I just need to veg out. <laughs> be like this but i think that's i really think that's normal in many in many cases in many homes that's normal and then again we try to turn that stuff off or we fall asleep with that stuff on and then we don't sleep well we don't have to get a deep sleep and that's a big issue let me read here amber said no tv in the bedroom that's my rule ah, good rule fantastic amber that, that should be a rule in everyone's house mm -hmm. as far as we're concerned and then <clears throat> Chantel said no electronics in the bedroom, but I do watch TV before bed. Mm -hmm. And I, and a lot of people do. Chantel, you're not alone. Uh, we really feel like that hour. And if an hour seems like a lot, and we kind of first started that, it did seem like a lot, mm -hmm. especially because of our how we run an online business, mm -hmm. that it's it's so important to try like try with a half hour, like 30 minutes, no electronics. If that's too much, 15 minutes. But I think we all know what it's like to wake up in the middle of the night, the phone's right there, and you flip through your news feed, like, mm -hmm. oh, I wonder what someone said. Like sometimes I'll wake up and check my email because I'm like waiting for a work to come back from one of our assistants. And I'm like, I can't wait to see this project. <laughs> and I, it's such a bad idea because then you wake up and your mind starts going yeah. and you're like, oh, this wasn't done well or a great job. This is what I can do. Just starts the whole cycle all over again. Mm -hmm. And phone, like phones are a big one. Um, you know, we have a uh, old school, like, uh, how do you call our, the, the alarm clock an old school, like. Alarm clock. I don't know. Okay, we have an old school alarm clock in our room. <laughs> Bye, that, Amber. Have that, a good day. Bye, Amber. Um, that w that we have in the, the in our bedroom because phones are so distracting in the in the bedroom. And you know, one, once I had a conversation with a client about that about her about having a phone in the bedroom, and um, there was a fear there of what if there was an emergency or what if someone needs to get a hold of me and um, my phone isn't right beside me, for example. But if you even just have your phone out in the hallway, um, turned on high or wherever, you're going to hear it if, if, if that, that happens. And the chances of that happening are, are, are slim, right? So just make sure your phone isn't in the bedroom because like Drew says, you're just tempted to scroll through the, your newsfeed, check your email or whatever it is, which will prevent you from getting a good sleep. Yeah. I, I, had, I talked to someone where they said they would... They played this game, some kind of, maybe I won't say what kind of game, but they played this game and they needed to check every few hours. So they um, would get up in the middle of the night and play the game or like check check whatever was going on and then they'd put it down. And I'm like, whoa, that's a little extreme. <laughs> <laughs> the game's going to be okay in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think we, well, it goes back to like electronics and phones. Like it goes back to like how many years ago? It wasn't that long ago where kids didn't have phones. We didn't live on our phones. Mm -hmm. And we, I, I kind of feel like it's an excuse. Like we hear this uh, from parents. I don't mean to disrespect anyone, but sometimes parents say, well, I, like I would never send my kid without a phone because then how could I get a hold of them? And I mean, we've gotten by for hundreds of years without phones. So, and I think we've all been pretty safe for the most part. Mm. And I think when it comes to driving, for example, um, you know, when you're using your phone, I think phones often cause more danger than good. Mm. And in this situation, if we're looking at phones, iPads, TVs, it also causes more issues, especially concerning sleep than good. Yeah. Louise said... Hi, Louise. Good morning. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> Louise said, no TV in my bedroom. Never, ever. Awesome. Mm, that's, that's great. That's great, Louise. Mm -hmm. Louise is also in, involved in our monthly membership group, and she's also in our 21-day CTP challenge. Yes, she is. So what? after we get past electronics, and now like we've been through, we would recommend a half hour of no electronics before bed. It gives your, time, your mind a chance to relax. It gives yourself a chance to relax. And then we said no, like no um, phones, exa for mm -hmm. example, in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. What's next? What else can we do? So during that hour, you're not just going to sit stare at the wall. <laughs> but, um, you know, this is where you give your body and in your mind the chance to, to unwind. So every evening you're going to go through this. You're going to have a set of steps or things that you do. It's going to be, it's very important that it is a routine and it is the same every night. So, for example, maybe um, you grab a book and you read um, before bed. Or maybe, um, like we, Drew and I, um, 
um, meditate, right? We have a meditate meditation routine that we do at, at nighttime and it doesn't have to be long it, you know I think ours is like five minutes ten minutes maybe um, so you have a series of things that you do so maybe it's bed by 10 read for 20 minutes write for 20 minutes meditate, and then that's it right so you need to have um, a set of not activities but a, a set of things that you do to calm your body and I think that would address um, your question Chantel about how do you shut your brain off we well, have to first give it the opportunity to shut off if you go right from TV watching TV right to bed then of course it's gonna be still running right because you've had all that stimulation but if you give yourself an hour a half hour to ha to let your brain wind down then um, chances are that it's going to be a more restful sleep so read before bed is a great one writing as well before before bed is great and getting all of those thoughts or emotions or whatever is causing your brain to stay awake get those out and then um, a meditation routine or a breathing routine it is like breathing exercise routine stretching we've also do um, some stretching before bed as well. So all of those things can help you in improve your sleep. Okay. I'm going to jump in here <laughs> again. You're so critical. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jenny just said that she said that I have a phone in my bed because I'm on call for 24 hours. Mm. And I think that's a bit different. Like everyone's under different circumstances, Jenny, or so I should mention Jenny mentioned on Instagram. And I think that everyone's in a different situation. And that, of course that's, that's not, I don't want to say that's, that's the norm. Like if that's something that you have to do, like we have a uh, friend, Noel, who's on a, a firefighter mm -hmm. as well. And like sometimes he, and sometimes his work as an electrician, he needs to be on call mm -hmm. as well. So I think it's a, a bit different situation, but we appreciate you bringing that up, Ginny. And if you're not on call all the time, then when you're not on call, then remove the phone from the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we have Shannon pop in here and she says, boy, I got to work. I got work to do. Oh. <laughs> Are you, um, tell us, tell it, elaborate a bit, Shannon, let us know if you were, you have phones in the bedroom or if you were just, we're talking about the, the proper type of routine to relax your mind. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> don't get all crazy. I just wanted to slow down a bit because all the things that you're listed, we could talk about individually. Sure. So for example, like when we have, when you talk about writing, like you mentioned writing, Mm -hmm. So we have the, we have the half hour or the hour to fill without electronics. So maybe if you could, you could write, like, what do we write about? So you can write, like, you can have a journal, like an evening journal that talks about a gratitude. So many of you probably heard a, about a, a gratitude journal. So you write about all the things that you've been grateful for throughout the day or the things that you're going to be grateful for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that's something very simple that you could do. And it, it could take three to five minutes. Or less. <laughs> it could take just a few minutes yeah, to sit down just, and write. And I think that helps release some emotions and it helps get your mind ready in a relaxed state instead of watching like an action movie or a suspense <laughs> A suspenseful movie? Yeah, an action movie or a sus suspenseful. That's a tough one for me. Is it? Suspense. Sitcom. Suspenseful sitcom, for example, right before bed if you're sitting there writing and you're you're putting your body in state into a state of gratitude, then your body's more ready to sleep, for example, instead of like being a whole like, yeah. Well, we know what it's like because they always end shows on the cliffhanger. And then your brain just goes, well, mine does anyway. I'm, I'm assuming other people's does too. Your brain just goes and goes and goes. What's going to happen next? With, oh, maybe this will happen or maybe that will happen. What if this happens? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I don't know about you guys, but I get totally like, What's the right word? Vested or invested? Invested. Invested in my shows. Like, <laughs> I feel like she lives in. The, I live she lives in, in my in the shows. and and uh, we we don't watch a lot of TV, but and we usually watch one Netflix series at at a time. <laughs> so, but I get involved with the characters, like they're like they're my friends, or it's my <laughs> life, and I'm in there in there too. So, if you, I don't give myself that time, that hour before bed to unwind or to relax my mind, then I'm just going to be thinking about my show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So again, it's important to, to stop watching your show and do things to unwind because I'd imagine a lot of people are just like you, Dorothy, like they actually live in the show. <laughs> and once the show turns off, the show's not over. 
No. The show carries on in your mind. In your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let's read what Shannon has to say here. Thanks for taking the time to share with us, Shannon. So, Shannon, do you want to read that or should I? She says, I watch TV once everyone goes to bed to have my time and lay there till I fall asleep. Then I then I wander to bed and can't sleep because I just had a nap. <laughs> yes. Then I play on my phone till my phone hits my face. <laughs> then I roll over and go to bed. <laughs> I don't think that's very uncommon, Shannon. Shannon also said this. I got into this habit because my brain does not shut off and I hate being alone in my thoughts. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, And I think that, Shannon, that's the fear when it comes to like meditation, for example. Because we have so much going on in our day, in our lives. And then we have anxiety. So anxiety is usually our thoughts in the future. And then, then you have the opposite, which is depression, which is our thoughts in the past. So if you take some time to start with breathing exercises, for example. So I've been hosting nationally syndicated Exploring Mind and Body once a week for seven years. And if I could take one tip from the experts that I've brought in for over 400 shows, every, almost every single one of them say how to improve your health and lives would be to breathe. <laughs> do meditation, do breathing exercises, or find a way to slow your mind down. Try to slow your, uh, find a way to slow your body down. So there is a great fear around meditation, around breathing exercise, because you're alone with your thoughts, mm-hmm. and we never take that time. We don't take that time to give ourselves a chance to breathe or, or a chance to relax. So if you could make yourself and Dorothy, we have there's apps that we've tried. Mm-hmm. We've tried music. Yeah. Do you remember an app that we could recommend? I'm really not good at, at remembering names of apps, but... Um, Headspace is head, one oh, of them. That, yep, that was a really good one because they are there guiding you, guiding you so you don't feel alone. Like you, and, and I know like meditation can be kind of scary like because you don't know what to do, but they're there to guide you and tell you what exercises to, to do. And it's short, like... I think it was like five minutes. Well, you can choose. So you can can choose choose. five minutes to an hour. Yeah. And and so, but that's a good way to get into breathing exercise because it it can actually, it's actually, you can choose zero to three minutes, three to five minutes. So you can start off very slow in progress. Yeah. And I think if you're, if you're just starting out to start slow would be better than, because you know, some people that are like big into meditation can go for like half hour, an hour, <laughs> right? But but start slow. Start like five minutes and, and see where you're at. And so taking that time, Shannon, it is, is very important. And you said that time is my time, like me time. So you, like you've substituted my time or me time with your news feed, right? Or I think you said phone? TV, I think. With TV phone. or phone. Like you've substituted that and then You talked about not having a routine, like having that proper routine is really going to change your sleep habits and it's going to change your life because again, we talked about how well it's, you're going to feel having a a good night's sleep. So if you could change that routine, all it is, is a routine, Shannon. Like, so you've started in a routine of what you do now, falling asleep, tell the phone hits your face, (laughs) as you said. So if you change that to some of the suggestions Dorothy was talking about, like stretching for five minutes, for example, Mm -hmm. going to a gratitude journal, and then you start to create different routines, then you can get a a better night's sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a few comments come in here. Chantel said, I hate cliffhanger episodes. I try to watch comedies before Mm -hmm. bed. That's better. I mean, it's better than an action movie. Comedies, but, yeah. yeah. But make I mean, you laugh. <laughs> yeah, make make you feel better. I mean, that's better for sure. But I think trying to avoid sleeping right before bed, and maybe you, maybe it's not right before bed, Chantel. Maybe you give yourself a half hour or an hour before you fall asleep. But I think having having those routines before right right before bed will make a big difference. Mm-hmm. And then she said, "Oh, Shannon, Shannon said music helps big time. Definitely, yeah, nice relaxing music, and that's something that." That we recommend. Like, just think about, for example, if you put on nice relaxing music, you put on incense, and you have a nice like detoxing bath. Mm-hmm. Like, how is that night going to change your sleep habits for, instead of you know, flipping through news feeds and then watching a loud action movie? Yeah. Like, it's going to change your entire life. Mm-hmm. And then Chantel popped in here again. She said, my husband and I have an air purifier machine we use in the bedrooms for white noise to sleep to. Hmm. Yeah, a great suggestion, Chantel. Thank you. 
and that could help that could help out as well for drowning out your mind i mm-hmm. suppose i heard people that use fans for example oh, yeah and it, for me like i think that's a great idea i really do but i think f- for me once you start to appreciate silence and quiet i think your your world opens up mm. and i think it was dan millman one of my favorite authors author of peaceful warrior and had him on the radio show a couple of times and he and said we met him in new york we did. We had, we, had, <laughs> we had tea with Dan <laughs> We had tea with him. But he always he always says this quote. I can't entirely remember, but it says something about the space between words, like the peace in the space between words, which is the silence, which is silence. Mm-hmm. Then he also said something about um, peaceful warrior, um, peaceful warrior, and how um, I, I can't remember it now. How how the the warriors um, the warriors silence is his best weapon ah. and i i think that when we start to appreciate silence so many things open up in our lives in our world and i think like there's so much going on around us and so much noise happening that we almost feel um if we're if there isn't noise then something's wrong because even like drew and i've been driving you know driving in the car and it's been quiet and then i'm like what's wrong What's, what's wrong with us? Is there something wrong? Because we haven't spoken in like a half an hour. Three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, three minutes, half hour. But there's nothing wrong with just sitting in silence as well, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, Jessica said something here. Thank you guys for all the comments. We love comments. So <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to leave some comments for us. Mm-hmm. Jessica said, meditation is my best friend. It used to be so hard. Now I do it every day. And those thoughts go away. But I still only sleep five hours. Plus, meditation allows me to slay my goals way faster. Mm -hmm. Nice. Awesome, Jessica. And you know what? I think once you start to meditate, the sun's coming up here. So we're getting a a funny light coming in. So thanks for bearing with us here. (laughs) Um, Yeah, and I think I've heard that a lot, Jessica, that when people come in, or sorry, you like to be called Jess. (laughs) Um, I think that many times when we start to meditate, we're like, oh my gosh, this is so wonderful. You know, if you know, if we get to it, like when we make time, like it feels great. Like we actually have more energy. Our mind is quieter. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, we get a chance to. What are you doing? I'm getting light. Do you want some light in there? Sunlight. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> angelic. Yeah. That's why the sun's on me. Do I look angelic right now? It's kind of on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like super. Oh, okay. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway. You started it. I did start it. And now <laughs> I'm ending it. I have a friend that, I have a friend that recently wrote me and she said that she feels like she has more power after she's been breathing and having uh, meditated. She's like, I don't know how I didn't you know, do this before. Yeah, how I lived without doing this. So Um one one little thing I uh, that helps me, because I know there's still some people that um you know, it's it's intimidating because you are alone with your thoughts. But I learned this through through one of my um, yoga classes that I was taking. And to completely, you know, at the end of a yoga class, you do a, a meditation, a, a shavasana. Um, but anyway, to be alone with your thoughts, you know, you have thoughts drift in. And one thing you can do is accept it and, and acknowledge the thought. And I actually, like, thank thank like thank it for coming in so for example if i have a worry that like floats in my mind while i'm meditating then i say thank you for letting me know but goodbye now right and you like actually mentally tell it to like goodbye thanks bye bye and i um imagine it going like in one ear and then out the other so that's just something that maybe if you're more of a beginner to, to meditation, that's something you can think about as well to kind of ease the mind and help it shut off. Is just acknowledge that thought's there, thank it for being there, and then tell it to get out of there. <laughs> yeah. And something that Jess was saying there is that once you start meditating, like like thoughts and thoughts will flood your mind. Mm. But the more you meditate, the less that comes. Mm-hmm. So for example, when Dorothy you're talking about how you accept the thought and let it go. Mm. I think many times we sit down and we're like, okay, meditation is nothing, no thoughts. But all these thoughts come into our our minds, so we think we're not meditating. Mm -hmm. But it's not true. We are meditating. We just have to allow those thoughts to come in and then allow them to leave as easily as they've come in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to close that 
compliance. Mm -hmm. Take it away. <laughs> um, another thing you can do too to shut your brain off or get those, ah, that's much better, Drew, or to have those thoughts kind of dissipate or disappear is to write it down. So maybe not during a meditation, you, you wouldn't want to write it down. But for example, if you're trying to sleep and your brain is keeping reminding you of, oh my gosh, don't forget to do this tomorrow. Oh, don't forget that or do this. And all of these things are flooding your mind. You could have a little notepad beside your bed and just write it down so that you're assured you won't forget to get that done tomorrow. Right. And then it's gone. Once it's written down, it's out of your mind. I just said yes to energy. I feel powerful from meditation and hypnosis. Uh, yeah, and like it's it's universal. Like we hear that all the time. And like I said, when we when I interview on the show, people talk about the benefits and energy is always one of them. Like, like more power, we need more power. Like it's that in, like internal power, mm -hmm. and we feel like so much stronger. And I think it's internal confidence. And I think. If you have anxiety, if you have depression, if you could find a way to find that inner power, because we all have it, mm -hmm. and if you could find it and bring it out through meditation, you'd be so much happier in a, a, different, a lot of different areas of your life. Mm -hmm. We don't have too much time here, Dorothy. We have an appointment in about 10 minutes. <laughs> so let's answer. Can we answer these as quickly yeah, as possible? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm pretty sure, Chantel, we answered your question about how to shut your brain off. But if we can help you with anything else, let us know. Um, Mandy asked, how do you get your kids to sleep through the night? Mm. So... What are you looking at me like? You just went <laughs> blank. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, well, I thought we were going to address the question. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so we would have to go back, Mandy, to the same kind of idea as how we talked about routine for adults and and doing the same for your children, right? And having, I know you said that your routines are huge in your house, but just like we have to find a routine that works for us as an adult, we have to find out what works for, for the kids too. So just, you know, having that no screen time before, before the, your child's bedtime and incorporating some of those things that we talked about, the, the reading and um, the music, essential oils, like all of those things that we do as adults, then we have to transfer that to our children as well. Um, one of our, our friends has... Um, like tea time before bed so, so with awesome. with her kids and they have chamomile tea before bed which is um like chamomile tea is known to help relax and help promote sleep um and then some essential oils like lavender so a nice calming um, lavender bath bef before bed i know kids kind of get crazy in the bathtub <laughs> but so maybe it's like a bath and then kind of give them a little bit of uh massage or a little bit of uh i don't know is rub the right word like a little rub with the the um lavender essential oils those can all be great great for kids too um reading time um before bed would be excellent as well music in their bedroom could work too um uh or even something like uh Chantel was saying how she muffles the sound with um her air purifier, sometimes a fan in a kid's bedroom will help if you just have a light fan going, kind of muffles sound for, for them. Because I think a lots of times when kids wake up, they've heard something, right? Um, whether we're still up or not, right? So they've heard something that's kind of startled them up or maybe it was a dream or, you know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, so I think... Uh, we'll have to move on here to get to these other questions, but just having those routines, like we have, I have a great show called Toddler Health. I'm oh, gonna, I'll put the that link. Is a good one. I'll put the link in the comments below. And it, she, this this lady, she's incredible. She offers all kinds of tips to improve toddler health, and sleep is one of them. So, and, but getting into those routines, and I know Mandy, you said earlier that routines are big in your house, but maybe implementing those routines a bit more or finding different things to help promote a, a restful night's sleep with mm -hmm. kids. And I Switching think it up a bit. if it's, if you get to a regular basis with the kids, we know that they thrive on routine. So mm -hmm. if you can get them in a restful night's sleep, then I think it'll, <clears throat> excuse me, I think it'll become a habit and they'll continue to, um, they'll continue to thrive and sleep well like that. Mm -hmm. Sarah is a shift worker. So she, her question was that, well, when we asked what your big, her big, the biggest struggle was, that was her biggest struggle was being on shift work. And it's tough. Like, 
I don't really know what the answer is for, for shift workers. It's, it's definitely not an easy lifestyle for sure. And it especially is, um, hard on our sleep routine. Yes. Shift work is by far the most challenging that we've encountered when it comes to sleeping, especially because like it, it's so crazy. <clears throat> Losing my voice here. It's so, it's so crazy that, so some of the, some of the week or one week you're up at 9 a.m. And then the next week you're trying to sleep at 9 a.m. Mm. or whenever it is. And I, I think it's, it's very challenging, but I still think that if we could try to get into a routine or maybe you can ask your work, your, your boss or however the shifts work. If, if one week is the same time and the next week is the same time. And I think often it is. Yeah. I'm not too sure how it works. <laughs> so, but if like when you, when you're at home, you set your routines for the week that you're home. Like set your proper routines, like sleeping, like your sleep routines and the meditation and the stretching. Even if you don't feel like it, you set those routines. And then when you're off to work, have have routines for when you're working. So you have two different sets of routines, which does make it challenging, but it will still, the routines and healthy habits will still set you up for success. So as challenging as it is when you're home and sleeping at different times, you set those proper routines just as when you're at work. So set your routines at work. So we still need to exercise we still need to plan for our food and bring our lunch and uh, live a healthy lifestyle. So although it's more challenging for shift workers, we can still set those routines to give ourselves a chance to better chance, sleep yeah. better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the last first question we had in had come in was from Ember um, and she suffers from a chronic pain and was asking, you know, well, say, just mentioning that that was her biggest <clears throat> challenge with getting a proper sleep is because she's always waking up because of, of the pain she experiences. Yes. So. And well, we just kind of met Amber and Amber's doing fantastic in our 21 day CTP group, for example. And I don't know what your lifestyle was like before Amber. I think we have to track past and of course we can't track future <laughs> yet, <laughs> but we can't track the past. And, and I think you've been doing so well. And I hope Dorothy and I actually, talked about this last night after we you told us about your chronic pain mm. and we thought that how amazing would it be if if we could see changes through complete truth protein mm. if we could see through changes through exercise those of you that aren't sure within our group where we had a pyramid that we're setting up and it's the we're in the last type of period uh top of the pyramid but we went from uh smooth weekly daily smoothies to a meal plan to fitness routines and putting it all together and i don't know what your days look like before amber but we're really hoping that we can see some relief with your pain through mm -hmm. eating better and through proper smoothies and through exercising on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very challenging and we wouldn't put ourselves in your situation or position. We don't know how much pain you're going through, but we do feel that many times that nutrition and fitness and living that healthy lifestyle heals and prevents in, a, in many different ways. So, um, let us know what it's like for you in the past, how your exercise and nutrition level has been. And maybe we can help watch you progress moving forward to mm -hmm. see if these changes do help, how much they help, and how we can alter to continue to help. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, <laughs> we're really got to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your questions and your comments and everything. We, we're so grateful. Thank you so much. Yes, we couldn't be here without you. So we so much appreciate you coming in, tuning in, being involved and engaged and asking questions. Um, you're awesome. Thank you. If you are <laughs> watching this at a later date, just leave your comments below. We do come back and try to answer questions afterwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you have questions or comments, leave them below and we'll, we'll get to them later on in the day. Mm -hmm. And we're back here tomorrow. We're back tomorrow. Tomorrow. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> Next week, we'll be back Friday morning at 7.30 Mountain Time. So come tune us in. Tune in. Tune us in. Tune us in. Come tune, tune us in. <laughs> <laughs> come tune in. And uh, if you have a topic suggestion, please let us know. We'd love to talk about what you want to hear us. Hear us talk about. <laughs> wow, it is time to go. Listen to this. And pay attention for, or stay tuned for news about us coming live earlier in the week, in the evening. In the evening. I got it. You got it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for your comments throughout the week as well on our page. That really helps yes. our page and it helps us as well. Yes. Thank you so much. So have a great day and we will see you. We'll smell you later. Oh, my God. <laughs>
Thanks, Chantel. Have a good day. Bye, guys. See you.